Start again. Hello, my name is Lisa Tate. I am from the Prince and the Pervert podcast. We are having a Facebook Live with our wonderful group members. So you should come along and join. Oh, Jen has entered the room. How are you, Jen? Now, I want to talk to you about a bit of gossip that we've come across on Twitter from someone who claims to be friends with the Maxwell family. Has anyone heard of Laura S. Goldman? She claims that she's friends with Jelaine's sisters and she's done a bit of media, come in for a bit of criticism actually. Now she was asked by one of our legends on Twitter about the status of Jelaine's relationship with the billionaire IT person, Ted Waite. Now Laura said, Jelaine liked to say she was with him for seven years, but she could never work, never get the math to work it out. She was with Scott Borgeson earlier than people think. Well, that's true. Oh, there's more people. Hello, Leslie. We are just saying that Jelaine has some dodgy maths around when she was with the billionaire Ted Waite and also when she was with Scott Borgeson. Jen and I think it could be around 2012 that they met. They told the court it was 2014. Now, it's interesting here, she said, this is Laura, Jelaine Maxwell's superpower is she always finds men to take care of her. Scott Borgeson was a safe port in a storm. Well, literally, didn't he run the cargo company? Hmm. Who she grew to love. Hmm. Ted Waite was never going to marry her. He hated the press surrounding her and Epstein. I agree, Jelaine Maxwell had terrible taste in men, but her goals with men are different to ours. This is, she's talking to me. So Laura's assuming that I have different goals with men. Basically my goal at the moment is if my family could help me clean up, including my husband. That's all, okay. Jen knows all about that. Now, she had terrible taste in men, but her goals were different than ours. With Jeffrey Epstein, she was looking for a rich guy whose money she could use to establish her social presence. The Maxwells think social status is everything. Really? Hmm. Okay, well, Scott Borgeson, I don't know if anyone else agrees. He reminds me a bit of her father, just in looks and general outlook. I'm not saying Scott's been involved in taking pension money. I wouldn't say that. But I think after I read that Scott Borgeson wanted to um, tie journalists up taser them and then detain them until the police have arrived. That's actually, hello, Helen. That is actually quite scary, don't you think? So I think that Scott Borgeson and also his marriage breakup was ugly with accusations of controlling behavior and physical abuse. So Laura goes to say the Maxwell's were public number one in England. Oh, okay, I think she means here like public enemy number one after Robert Maxwell was accused of pilfering his employee's pension plan. He wasn't accused, he did it, okay? And some people think Epstein got the money. What do you think? Leave me a comment. I'm sorry, I'm in my back room at the moment. It's so hot. I've got foam up to improve the um, sound, but I just feel so hot. <laughs> anyway, that's Australia for you. So I think that's fascinating, but the fact that Ted Waite was never going to marry her. Okay, Nicole, do you want to be in the video? All right, here we go. Oh, I think Nicole's pressed the wrong button. Anyway, where are we, Jen? So more to come about Borgeson, I think. Ted Waite's really hasn't had anything to say on this matter but I found something on Twitter again conjecture but someone said a good friend from college told her that she was close friends with the daughter of Ted Waite billionaire co and co-founder of Gateway during this time he was dating Jelaine Maxwell Casey went on vacation with the family multiple times 
Hmm. So apparently all of Ted's daughters hated Maxwell. She describes Maxwell as a super dark lady and that she had the weirdest energy coming from her at all times. She could tell she was a psychopath. <laughs> now, I'm not seeing any comments here, so I don't know. I'm too scared to touch something. I don't want to get rid of you. Comments. Here we go. No, it's only me that can write one. Let, oh, hi, Tanya. Hi, Nicole. Leave me a message if you can on there, a comment. So the Ted's daughters hated Maxwell. They could tell she was a sociopath. Well, Maria Farmer's sister, Annie, she has a PhD in psychology and she says she thinks she's a psychopath. That's where I'm leaning towards. So apparently Ted Waite is a good guy. She was never approached by anyone involved with the family in inappropriate ways and the daughters seem to be fine as well. So that's just the friend's perspective. Straight up evil is how she and the girls thought of Maxwell. She was extremely pompous and very outspoken. I've heard some weird things about Jelaine out in public, like picking journalists up off the ground because she could and saying she'll have sex with people in front of their partners just to unsettle them. Epstein did the same thing. So, Jelaine Maxwell. Epstein, I don't think, was that much of a catch, except he had the money. But the money could get her, according to Laura Goldman, into these VIP circuits. I still think it's a bit sad. Don't you think? It's terrible. Um, I mean, honestly, I think her and Epstein, they made a good crime couple, but if she was in love with him, and this is what Laura Goldman's saying, she fell in love with Jeffrey Epstein. She was in too deep to leave him. Epstein eroded her self-confidence. Hmm, I don't, not sure I agree there. She didn't think she could get anyone else. Well, <laughs> if they knew the truth, she wouldn't. She had dreams of being the ultimate power couple with Epstein, apparently. That was the ultimate aphrodisiac, what, being a power couple. But you have to stop your power lunch to go out and recruit girls for Epstein. That just doesn't sound that attractive. Like, did he give her a quota of how many girls he needed a week? Because sometimes he needed up to six times a day. So she was his employee. She's, well, co-conspirator, alleged co-conspirator. So Maria Farmer has said that Jelaine, around school time finishing, would bolt out the doors and say, I've got to get the new bials. I've got to get the new bials. What? <sighs> so Jelaine Maxwell. She is a bit of an enigma. Now, I'm going to talk just quickly about something else that's going on from the New Zealand Herald. Now, I get frustrated with the lack of information from France, and I think that could be partly a language issue. But apparently, Jeffrey, this is according to the New Zealand Herald, Jeffrey Epstein's butler has come forward with claims he waited on a rotation of famous Faces including Prince Andrew, da, 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 Bill and Melinda Gates, and as well as Steve Bannon, according to a report. Well, we did know that. The butler, identified only as Gabriel, has opened up about the convicted pedophile celebrity guests during his 18-year career working at the $12 million home, New York Post reported. Okay, so according to Frank's... Info, former Prime Minister of Israel, Edward Barak, and, oh, hello Heather, how are you? And Prince Andrew were amongst the powerful guests he waited on. The Prince was known to crash several nights at the apartment, like, come on, we all know, but he's never going to be accountable.
While Epstein was out of town, the prince would crash. But Butler Gabriel also alleges his boss hosted Bill and Melinda Gates. So more to come. It's more than just Jelaine and Jeffrey Epstein, isn't it? My glasses are fogging up. It's so humid in here. I'm so sorry I can't see your comments. But I hope that's given you a rundown of what's going on at the moment. Um, Jen and I will be back. We'll put this online if you want to listen to it again. Follow me on Twitter at Lisa Podcast and Jen is at Oh Really Truly. <laughs> I appreciate everyone for getting on here with such late notice, but I thought the Laura Goldman um, information was interesting. So have a great day. Enjoy your evening if you're in America or 